Teresa, and I am so glad that you're here because we are cheering each other on as we learn from the Bible about kindness. And Celeste is here too. Yay, Celeste! Yay, you! Yay, Teresa! I'm Celeste, and we are cheering each other on because all month long we're talking about kindness. Kindness is showing others that they are valuable by how we treat them. And I have to tell you, Haley is coming on here next and she is ready to cheer. So let's go. What's up people? I am Haley and I hope you came to cheer today because I am and always have been a super fan. I'm telling you, the town I grew up in, we all rooted for the home team. We ate, drank, and slept orange. And whether we were there in the stands or watching from home, we cheered our hearts and our lungs out for our team. That's what's called kindness. Kindness is showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. And if you're wearing orange like me, you can expect some first class treatment. But if you're wearing blue, then that means you're a fan of that other team, our rivals. I can tell you what they're like. They're mean. They're cheaters. They eat broccoli. They're pretty scary. I've actually never met one in person, but that's what I've heard. I am not a fan. Not a fan. You know, if I saw someone on that blue team lying on the side of the road, you know what I'd do? I, I, I'm actually not sure what I would do. I'm not, I'm not sure. But today's Bible story will help us know what we should do. <sighs> Broccoli! <gasps> The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, Chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Everywhere Jesus went, crowds of people followed. His popularity made the religious leaders kind of nervous, how he turned their expectations upside down. What is he up to anyway? So they began to look for ways to trip him up. One day, a law expert saw his chance to test Jesus. A teacher, <clears throat> What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus turned the question right back on the law expert. What is written in the law? How do you read it? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But the law expert wanted to discover the very least he could do to obey the law, so he got tricky. Ah, uh, yes, but really, who is my neighbor? Jesus looked directly at the law expert and he saw what was in his heart. So Jesus began a story. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now, if Jesus were to tell this story today, it might go something like this. There's a man that we'll call uh, Ben who needed to travel from Jerusalem to Jericho. It was a lonely, rugged road, but he was well prepared. Got my water skin, got my quail jerky. Ah, uh, got my snake repellent. Uh, got my large number of clinking gold coins. <laughs> Stick them up. Uh-oh, forgot my mace. A band of robbers attacked Ben. They took everything, leaving him half dead by the side of the road. Oh. Please, help me. There was no one to hear. The sun beat down. Shadows shifted as the day wore on. At last, he heard footsteps. Through shimmering heat, he could barely see a man in khakis and a blue button-down shirt. 
in the beginning. Um, you know, let me Google the Greek word for beginning. That'll make me sound more intelligent. The man was a preacher working on his Sunday sermon. Help me. The preacher spotted Ben lying there in the dust, but he immediately looked down at his phone, pretending not to see. Instead, he crossed to the other side of the street, putting as much space between him and Ben as possible. Please. But the preacher was gone. Ben's throat was dry now. He could barely swallow. Finally, he saw someone else. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. A worship leader was now trekking down the road. He wore skinny jeans, uh, an unnecessary scarf, and uh, AirPods. Help, help me. Well, the worship leader definitely saw Ben, but he cranked up the volume on his AirPods and shimmied to the other side of the road as he passed. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, and I run a river, I'm gonna run away. As the man's voice faded away, Ben was left in despair. Shadows lengthened as evening approached. Once again, Ben heard someone coming. Turning his head, he could just barely make out a donkey. Perhaps he could tell from the way the person was dressed that this person wasn't a Jew. He was a Samaritan. Oh no. Jews and Samaritans were enemies. Even though the two groups were related, there was a history of bitter conflict between them. And the Samaritans worshiped God in a different way than the Jews did. Long story short, a Samaritan would have been the last person Ben would have wished to find him. What's that by the road? Instead of ignoring Ben though, the Samaritan man slowed down and got off his donkey. Oh no, who did this? The Samaritan quickly rummaged for supplies in his bag. Here, I have some water. Those are nasty gashes. I've got oil and wine to clean them out. The Samaritan bandaged Ben's wounds and hefted him onto his own donkey. Steady, steady. Hey, wrap your arms around his neck like this. By the time darkness fell, the Samaritan brought Ben to an inn where the injured man could recover. Thank you, thank you. In the morning, the Samaritan gave the innkeeper some money. Please take care of this man. I'll return and pay you back for any extra expenses. Goodbye. Thank you. When Jesus finished the story, no one said a word. He looked directly at the law expert. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The law expert fidgeted. To admit that the Samaritan had acted as a true neighbor was to say that everyone is a neighbor, no matter how different they may be. Well, I suppose it, in this case, one would have to say the man who had mercy on him. Go and do likewise. Jesus' story was clear. Love your neighbor as yourself isn't limited to just the people in your neighborhood. Your neighbor means anyone who needs you to show them God's love. So Jesus said to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And who is your neighbor? Well, it's the person who lives next door to you. Or in your apartment building. Or in your neighborhood. Or the town you grew up in. Or your country. Or your planet. In short, your neighbor is everyone. That includes people who look different from you, people who believe different from you, people who have more money than you or less money than you, everyone. Jesus said we should go and be kind to all of those people. It kind of makes me think of the fans of that blue team. If I'm supposed to be kind to everyone, that includes them. <laughs> but how? How can I be kind to someone who's so, so different? Maybe I could try putting myself in their shoes. Whoa, well, that's a start. Hmm, what else can I do? 
Maybe I can find out more about the blue fans so I can see what we have in common. Like, I'll bet they grew up rooting for their team just like I did. I'll bet they cheered their hearts and their lungs out. And I bet they ate, drank, and slept blue too. Maybe we're more alike than we think. Or maybe we're just different. And that's okay. In fact, it's incredible to know that there are billions of people with all kinds of differences all over the world! So here's the one thing for us to remember today. Be kind to people who are different from you. Don't just think about what you'd want or need. Put yourself in their jerseys and think about what they'd want or need. It really is possible to be kind to everyone. You know, I hate to admit it, but I look good in this color. <laughs> and another thing, broccoli? <laughs> it's really not that bad. Bye, super friend! Mmm! Jesus' story made it very clear. Anyone you'll ever meet is your neighbor. You shouldn't just show kindness to people who are like us. You should show kindness to everyone we meet. And when you follow Jesus' example, you can't help but want to show kindness. Like it says in Colossians 3.12, you are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be proud, be gentle and patient. We've got a song for this one. Let's go do it. Colossians 3, 12. You are God's chosen people. You are holy and dear. reminds me of the bottom line from our story today. Be kind to people who aren't kind to you. And we have got a great way for you to learn more about God's kindness this week. It's our God Times weekly devotions. You can sign up online to have this mail to your house or pick it up in the elementary room on Sundays or in the bin outside the church entrance at any time. We've got a song coming up next. Can you match the motions? I bet you can. Okay. 
darkness overwhelms my heart, my heart Can't keep it to myself, gotta share it with someone else Your kindness overwhelms my heart, my heart What you give to me is not for me to keep It's for the world to see your love Remember this week, be kind to people who aren't kind to you. I know you can do it. Bye!